Hey everybody, it's time to Nephis and chill. In this video, I'll be going over all class and combat changes and balancing for update 38, otherwise known as the Necrom chapter. We do have a seventh and new class called the Arcanist that have come out for the Elder Scrolls Online. With the chapter, its abilities and sound effects are completely unique and will probably be known a lot for its rather flashy and bedazzling effects on screen. You can see the most up-to-date tooltips for the Arcanist skills and passives on the ESCU website linked in the description below. The class, in summary, is quite tanky in both PvE and PvP. While the class doesn't bring any new major debuff like the Necromancer did, which was major vulnerability, it does offer easier access to minor brittle on target, minor heroism through shields, minor courage in the form of a persistent AoE, and uh, very strong passives for tanking. Healing-wise, due to the minor courage and other abilities, it'll most likely be popular with healers for four main groups and certain raid compositions. The class as a damage dealer is probably the lowest APM class, APM meaning actions per minute, when compared to any other ESO class right now, including Dragonites, Nightblades, and so forth. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing. The class as a damage dealer is quite reliant on its beam damage skill, or Fate Carver, which can last for up to 5 plus seconds when taking into consideration the Drake Crux system, which new players shouldn't worry about as it's simple and straightforward. It is quite an approachable class to play for both newer and older players, with easy to handle rotations that packs quite a lot of burst damage. Next, let's talk about the general combat changes, like the melee attack range. Melee attack range is being changed to a standard 7 meter distance rather than the 5 meter distance. Developer comment on this reads, one of the main callouts we hope will make life easier for courageous warriors is the update to melee attack range being a default of 7 meters rather than 5. Some of you have been long around, around long enough to know this was our original standard, which was changed quite a while back. But the game has evolved quite a bit since then, and we're confident we can move back to this experience to better align with our combat pacing and feel. This extra 2 meters won't be astronomical, but we hope that reduces the likelihood of missing melee attacks and high mobility encounters and gives those who stay up close and personal a few more precious moments to react to incoming threats. We're reverting the changes to melee attack range from years past to get them back where they were, since many of the original problems that caused that pass to be needed originally have been resolved with other targeted changes over time. It's our hope that this helps make melee attack abilities far less frustrating to utilize in mobile encounters, as well as helping give melee builds slightly more reaction time to incoming mechanics. Note that this does not affect radius sizes of abilities, only ranges. Empower's buff bonus to heavy attacks has been reduced from 80% to 70%. On this is also a developer comment. Since we've started working on heavy attack build viability in the past year, We've seen a massive surge in their use, which is absolutely phenomenal for seeing more players being able to participate in any game content at a much more digestible pace. While we're happy to see these builds being ran, we're seeing these builds inch a little too close to some of the high-end builds with how much more simplified they are, and in summary cases, they're outperforming a standard build. We're cutting down the damage bonus here ever so slightly, in hopes that when you have Empower with a bunch of other heavy attack bonus sets, the numbers are still nice and juicy, but not as close to a full online attack build. After our ESOU faculty's testing and doing the mathematics on this reduction to Empower's bonus, all conclusions state at worst a heavy attack build such as the Oaken Sorg or Oaken Crow will see approximately a 3-4% nerf to overall DPS. So if you were hitting 100k DPS on the dummy, you'll be hitting still 96 or 97k DPS on the dummy. Potions have also been changed, namely detection potions. Reduce the bonus detection size of these potions to 43.5 meters down from the original 100 meters during week 1 PTS. These values, according to the developers, will ensure similar power experiences and detection sizes as before, with the new updates to how invisibility works with detection bonuses under the hood. As you can see from this picture here, it's a representation, the red line, of how far exactly 43.5 meters is. Next, let's talk about the classes. The Dragon Knight had a fix for a Inferno issue or Flames of Oblivion issue. 
uh, under the Draconic Power skill line, we do have a 27% dot nerf to Burning Talons. However, we did see an increase of the duration from 4 to 5 seconds for Burning Talons. And the Elder Dragon passive, due to the fact that uh, you know every player is going to be able to have a 7 meter melee range attack uh, this passive no longer extends the range of melee attacks by two meters for dragon knights instead it increases your health recovery by 259 per draconic power ability slotted on your bar rather than the previous five percent per ability note that the pts week one changes had previously made it so that dot effects from talons acid spray and any other ability that behaves similarly would only apply if the target hit by the initial hit does not have a stack of the dot active after player feedback this change was reverted but we will still see um, some nerfs here and there for some of these dots for the necromancer we do have a fix for blast bones we also do have a interesting buff to the damage bonus of the third cast for flame skull uh to 50 percent up from a 20 percent um bonus so that's quite interesting and noticeable for a nightblade the death stroke duration or the in cap duration of the debuff has been increased from six seconds to eight seconds which is in my opinion is really nice and the developer comment says, For the Masters of Assassination, the Nightblade class is a little bit further behind in single target damage than we'd like. We're increasing the uptime on this debuff to help Nightblades get more DPS and kill potential and priority targets. For the Nightblade Shadow abilities, the Path of Darkness effects will now appear or apply more cons consistently rather than having different behaviors or for light of sight rules across them. Summon Shade, there was an issue where this ability in the Dark Shade morph could return as ranged abilities in some cases. And of course for the Concealed Weapon morph, with the change to Path of Darkness, this morph now grants its damage done bonus for 10 seconds if Major Expedition was active while it was cast, rather than for 5 seconds when the Major Expedition ends or was refreshed to ensure the skill is used actively rather than passively. The damage bonus still operates the same for Leaving Sneak or Invisibility. Next, for the Sorcerer, under the Dark Magic skill line. Dark Exchange it now, and of course the Dark Conversion Morph also grant Minor Berserk for the 20 second duration that they restore resources. I mean, on the other hand, Dark Deal grants Minor Berserk and Minor Force for the 10 seconds it restores resources. The developer comment reads, these abilities are meant to be the class's primary resource restore skills, and while they do that just fine, they don't offer any other reason to run leaving them feeling a bit behind when compared to other class resource skills like Restoring Focus or Bold Netch. To sweeten the dark deals occurring, we're adding some name buffs for a duration to help the class reinforce their spell slinging nature, while making sure we don't push them over the top in high-end damage production with group compositions. For the Negate Magic Ultimate, Apparently, there was an issue with the ultimate and its morphs where they could not uh, dispel another version of themselves. For the Daedric Summoning skill line for a Sorcerer, Summon Storm after that, this is going to be an interesting one. The synergy from this ultimate is Morph's Charge Lightning, now grants Magic Berserk for 10 seconds, up from 8 seconds. Also increase the amount of targets the synergy will target to 12, up from 6, which means you'll probably always want at least one Sork in your DPS raid composition. Salmon Volatile Familiar Morph now only stuns on the second tick when you activate it rather than the fourth and final ticks to make the stun less volatile in nature, which is pretty funny because the morph name is Volatile Familiar, and help reduce the passive feeling of the skill. To make up for this loss, we're increasing the chance of applying the charge status effect from the special active's damage to 5% per tick, up for 1%, and this, these are actually pretty nice buffs for Sork so far. And developer comment on this is, since we've been slowly improving access to the highly coveted Major Berserk buff type, we want to make sure this source stands out in the pack as a special case and reason to consider bringing a sorcerer or two to group compositions without making them feel mandatory. Next, we have the Templar class under the Aedric skill line. Focus Charge and its morphs now grant Major Protection for 4 seconds after reaching your target. The Major Protection is 10 seconds, however, on Explosive Charge Morph. 
Developer comment reads, after the adjustments to Templar's damage to make sure they're more in line with other classes, we've seen them drop down in effectiveness in PvP situations in some areas. Rather than bloating out their damage again, we're trying to help enable them to stay in the fray longer, and keep up the pressure by adding some defensive bonuses when they dive into foes, helping them go all in before needing to peel back and turtle up. To be honest with you, uh, this past White Strikes Mayhem, and before that even, I am quite wary of running into certain Templar builds. Uh, they're extremely tanky at the moment right now. I don't, <laughs> not exactly sure why they're making them tankier for, for Necrom, but I guess we'll see. Uh, for the Dawn's Wrath skill line, Solar Flare, this ability is morphs now also grants Sun Sphere for 5 seconds after casting. Sun Sphere increases your damage done with class abilities by 5%, really nice. Solar Barrage Morph, this morph also extends the duration of Sun Sphere to 20 seconds. Backlash and its morphs now need 60% less total damage needed to reach their final values. We're lowering the amount of damage, says a developer comment, needed for these abilities backlash power to light purifying light to reach their big boom numbers as they need values that were essentially impossible to achieve in pvp to get to their maximum power the damage required will still be challenging to reach in pvp environments and in most cases where opponents are taking countermeasures to deny or mitigate the applier's pressure the damage will still not reach the maximum amount we're doing this intentionally so templars retain a weakness in some capacity we'll continue to monitor this value and adjust accordingly if if necessary after we get more data from live servers when how this change interacts with the other buffs the class received in this update for the restoring light skill line for the templar the light weaver passive has been fixed where the passive's ultimate could apply to the caster rather than only allies as its tooltip states the rune focus skill this ability and its morphs now heal you for two percent of your max health every second they are active rather than 4.5% of your max health while you are standing within the rune. We increase this healing effect by 200% while you are standing in the rune, resulting in a 33.3% repeating increase overall while in the rune. Fixed an issue where the heal from these abilities were not properly considered a restoring light heal. Also fixed an issue where these abilities were not considered as healing abilities in cases. Developer comment on this Templar change reads, after the changes to these abilities grant them healing, we've seen a slight improvement in their ability to defend their sanctified grounds. But we're noticing the class really suffers in the majority of content with mobility. While the class is meant to feel empowered while locked to an area, we're trying to help them feel less clung to an area by offering some passive healing in between and doubling down, or tripling down in this case, when they decide to mark their fighting arena. For the Warden, we do have the animal companion skill line. Scorch had an issue where it was fixed, where they could fail to hit larger monsters in some cases, probably referring to things like um, dragons, Teleria, Hardmoon, and so forth. Winter's Embrace skill line includes Arctic Blast Morph changes, now fires a stun after a two second delay rather than immediately. Recasting the ability before the delay completes will reset the ability timer. Fix an issue with the Arctic Blast where the stun ignored line of sight rules. And lastly, for weapons, uh, Restoration Staff didn't really see any uh, changes, mostly fixes to uh, visuals, fixes to client crashes being caused by uh, Restoration Staff abilities, also fixed an issue where the Morphs of this ability could have their visuals of the buffs they provide up here before targets were healed, and by this ability, I mean one of the abilities uh, that were referred to in the patch notes, I believe it was Radiant Regeneration. One-handed shield, low slash, the ability and more secondary effects now last 12 sec or 15 seconds up from 12 seconds, which is a nice standardization. Shield wall fixed an issue where this ultimate is more block functionality would become lost after sprinting. Dual wield flurry fixed an issue with this ability and its morphs where it could sometimes ever so incredibly rarely only hit three times when weaving an extremely rapid succession, which is not for most cases. For bow, we do have Acid Spray, and I mentioned this earlier. Uh, they increase the damage per tick of the dot effect of this morph by approximately 11%. If you're confused by that value, you're probably looking at PTS Week 1 and then comparing it to PTS Week 5. Uh, they originally buffed it by 30 some percent, I believe it was 38%. Then they nerfed it again by 27%, making the total buff to 11%. And they also increased the duration, just like Talons 
from four seconds to five seconds for acid spray. Racial passives, and the only racial passive that was touched for Necrom was Yargonian's uh, resourceful passive. Fix an issue where the heal from this passive was not considered a proc. And for Vampire, fixed an issue where feeding on hostile enemies at stage 4 vampirism could cause their health bar to become desynced. And very lastly, but not least, we do have a bunch of combat and arcanist fixes. Uh, I won't be reading these out because you can just go see for yourself what was fixed in terms of like uh, any combat quality of life, like the ability timers and stuff like that, what the progression of the arcanist development was on the PTS. And that's really it. Thanks for uh, w uh, you know watching and listening to the video. I hope this helps kind of summarize and um, consolidate all the changes coming to uh, the classes with uh, the Necrom update that we'll be playing. And yeah, that's really it. Thanks so much, guys, for watching, and I'll see you guys soon. Hopefully you have fun. Let me know what you guys think about the class changes so far, the skill changes, and so forth. I'm kind of curious what classes you think they need to focus on for the upcoming patches as well. See you guys in a bit.